This video is the fifth in a series of revision videos about the A-level chemistry topic of rate equations, and in this video we look at how we can use graphical representations of the Arrhenius equation in order to help us to calculate the activation energy of a particular reaction. In the fourth video in this series we met the Arrhenius equation, and if you haven't already watched that video I would recommend you do so before you try and handle this topic. So the Arrhenius equation is a numerical representation of how the rate of a chemical reaction is impacted by a number of factors, including the activation energy and also the temperature. And as we saw before, we can rearrange that equation in a number of different formats, this one in the top left being the one that we use most commonly. Now, depending on the exact question you're looking at, you may or may not be told specifically that you need to compare the natural log of k to 1 over t, but that is what we're going to need to do, and I'll show you why. Here's our rearranged version of the Arrhenius equation, and believe it or not, this equation does take the form y equals mx plus c, which you first met doing GCSE maths, and you know is the equation for a straight line. So if I take my, um, my rearranged Arrhenius equation and I'm just going to shuffle it round slightly. So I'm not actually rearranging it, I'm just going to write things in a slightly different order. So we now make that natural log of k is negative activation energy over RT plus the natural log of A. So you can see there that the natural log of A is going to be your C term, it's going to be your intercept term. And then if we use 1 over T, as our, um, our value for x, if we put that on the x-axis, then in that case the gradient m is going to be negative activation energy divided by r. So those are all of our terms. So what we're going to have is a graph in which we've got 1 over t on the x-axis, natural log of k on the y-axis, and the gradient is going to be the negative um, activation energy divided by r, divided by 8.314. Here's some typical data that I might be asked to use to solve a question like this. So the first thing that I need to identify is that these temperatures are in Celsius and they need converting to Kelvin by adding 273. Having done that, I can then take the reciprocal of each of those numbers. So I can add a column to my table and do 1 divided by 473 and so And so this gives me a series of reciprocals of the time. Next, I need to take the natural log of k, and this is going to be the value that's going to go on my y-axis. Now, what you'll notice is that all of those natural logs of k are negative numbers, and that's always going to be the case because all of our values of k are going to be numbers that fall between 1 and 0, um, and so we're going to expect negative answers when we take the natural log of those. So what that means is that when I come to plot my data, my x-axis is actually going to be at the top of the plot, not at the bottom, because all of my y values are going to be negative numbers. Now, having plot those data, I can tell that the gradient is going to be equal to the negative activation energy divided by the gas constant R. So if I can work out the gradient, I can work out what the activation energy will be. So to work out the gradient, I do the change in y divided by the change in x. And based on these numbers, I can see that my change in y is going to be minus 5.675, and my change in x is going to be 0 0.000628. So if I divide y by x, I get a gradient of minus 9,000-ish. And I can then multiply that by the gas constant 8.314 to work out that my activation energy is going to be about 75,000 joules per mole. And then, of course, I want to take account of the fact that it's normal to report activation energies um, in kilojoules per mole rather than joules per mole. So I need to divide by 1,000. And also, I want to reduce my answer to an appropriate number of significant figures. So having successfully graphed this data and calculated a value for the activation energy, I could then be asked to calculate a value for A. Now, we did already say that the natural log of A was going to be the intercept of this graph, the point where it crosses the y-axis. But unfortunately, with the scale I've drawn this, my graph is not going to cross the y-axis. And although I could make my graph much smaller to sort of allow me to extrapolate it loads and loads, that's not really going to be accurate. So I need an algebraic way of handling this. If I go back to my rearranged version of the Arrhenius equation, then I can see that actually I already have all of these terms. 
In my initial table, I had the temperature and I calculated the natural log of K, and then I've just worked out the activation energy. And obviously R is the gas constant, so it just doesn't change. So I can put all of that information into this equation to get a value for the natural log of A. I'm going to start out by working out what RT is. So I take the gas constant and multiply that by the temperature in Kelvin, which gives me an answer of 3,933-ish, if I round it. And then I'm going to work out what the activation energy divided by that is, which gives me an answer of 19.096. Then I take my value for the natural log of K from the table, which I've already calculated, and that tells me that I have a value for the natural log of A of 12.51-ish. And to work out what A is, if I know what the natural log of A is, then I need to put E to the power of that. And that gives me an answer for A of 2.79 times 10 to the 5. And then I know that my units for A are the same as my units for K. And although I'm not actually showing them on this slide, we did have them earlier in the table. And in this instance, it's going to be moles to the minus 1, decimeters cubed, seconds to the minus 1. Remember, those units could be different, but they will always match K for that particular reaction. Thank you very much for watching, and hopefully that whistle-stop tour of graphing Arrhenius equations has helped to clarify a few things in your head. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe below for more A-level chemistry videos coming soon.